QuickBooks Desktop 2023 reports. Print, save as PDF, and organize. Let's do it with Intuit's QuickBooks Desktop 2023. Support accounting instruction by clicking the link below, giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website, broken out by category, further broken out by course. Each course then organized in a logical, reasonable fashion, making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a YouTube page. We also include added resources such as Excel practice problems, PDF files, and more like QuickBooks backup files when applicable. So once again, click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it. Here we are in QuickBooks Desktop Sample Rock Castle Construction Practice File provided by QuickBooks going through the setup process we do every time, maximizing the homepage to the gray area. View drop down, open windows list, hide icon bar checked off, open windows on the left hand side. Not going to open up the balance sheet and income statement or profit and loss this time because we're going to go directly into the memorized reports and open some reports from there we set up in a prior presentation. If you don't have this set up already, that's okay. You can open up your own reports, practice formatting them, and then we'll look at the options for printing and saving as a PDF and how to organize those reports. Go into the reports drop down. We want to go to the report center. And then I'm going to maximize this because it always unmaximizes for some reason. We're going to go into the memorized reports that we set up in a prior presentation under the client month end reports. I'm going to then see it as a list on the right hand side. So in prior presentations, we put these into the system. The idea being that we're going to try to group these reports at the end of the month so that we can then provide them to the clients as easy as possible. So they've already basically been formatted. If you don't have these, you can open up just a standard balance sheet and practice formatting them so that you can then save them in an organized fashion. But the idea is that we set up a different uh, item or a different grouping, a different group in our memorized reports, which you could do by going to the edit memorized reports. We set up the groups by hitting the drop down or rise up and said new groups, which we made a group for the client month end reports. Then we customized each of these reports that we might want to include each month at the end of the month for our clients so that we can then populate them and generate them as easily as possible. Afterwards, I've numbered them so we can order them. I'm gonna change the order now to, to put the, the number one on top. I'm gonna to put my cursor on this little icon and just drag number one to the top here. So we'll reorganize the reports. There's number two, there's number three, there's number four, there's number five, and there's number six, making it easy for us to then organize. I'm gonna close this back out. And now we're back in our reports. I'm gonna refresh here by going to standard and then memorized. And then now they're gonna be organized here. So there we have it. Now I'm gonna run one of these reports. I'm gonna run each of the reports, go into the first one. This is the summary balance sheet, which we're imagining would be the first report possibly to use. We're only looking at balance sheet reports, by the way, we'll get into other reports like income statement or profit and loss reports later, but we've just been working on the balance sheet reports here. So this might be the first one you would want to give when introducing the balance sheet. I might change the date to 12-31-24, and then it still keeps the formatting and then possibly we're going to, to save this as a PDF or print it. Now our options up top to give this to a supervisor would be, we can print it of course, so we can go to report print, we can email it, so we can email it as a PDF or Excel, but we have to set up our email with the QuickBooks account to do that. But this is somewhat limited still, even if we email, because we, have to, we might have to send like multiple emails and we might have, as we see here, six reports that it would be better if we could zip the reports possibly or give one PDF report. So we also have an Excel dropdown so we can export it to Excel. We'll do that later next time. This could be useful because you can actually use Excel and you can use like a cute PDF printer, a printing option and try to get all the reports onto one PDF file in a fairly simple way. So we'll talk about that next time. Note that presenting these reports monthly, quarterly to clients, if you're a bookkeeper, 
or if you work in the accounting department, giving that to your supervisor in an organized face fashion is kind of like half the battle in some way. Not that we're fighting anyone here, but you know, it's how you want to basically the presentation of the reports is going to be a crucial thing in terms of how they're perceiving your work. Oftentimes when you're doing kind of bookkeeping stuff, they might not even understand what they're looking at, but they can say, Hey, it looks nice if it's organized. So you want to make sure that it is nice and organized and give it to them in a nice organized way. That's kind of the point here of what we're, what we're looking at. So if we go to the printing options, we get the drop down. by the way, the other way we might give it to someone is not by email, but maybe give it to them on a cloud drive, like a Google drive or a Dropbox or something like that. That will be a common way of giving the files these days. Okay. So let's say we were, we were going to print the report. So here's the printing options. So we're going to choose a printer. This is a cute PDF printer. We'll talk more about that in the future. Cause this is another way that we can print it to a PDF file. And then we've got the portrait and the landscape. So this is going to be the same kind of issue that we have with when you're printing like long reports in Excel or something like that. If it's just one skinny report, you're probably going to use a portrait kind of in terms of the paper setting. But if it's a very wide report, it might not fit on one page wide. And that's when we would go to landscape. We'll talk more about that when we get to those problems and those kinds of reports. You possibly could see that problem happening more likely if I double click on this report, change the date to 010124. You can see this transaction detail reports a little wide. So that's when you might have to go to landscape. For example, once we're given the reports, we have to give an idea of does it, does it cause a problem if I have some reports portrait and some reports landscape? You want to have an idea of that. If you're printing the reports, it could, if you're giving them in a PDF file, a lot of times the PDF will kind of alter the way it's going to be viewed when you're looking at it. So it's not as big of a problem that you have some portrait and some landscape. So we'll see that shortly. Uh, so we can then say, let's go back to my printing option. So we got that, we've got page ranges. So we've got the pages that we can be printing all pages or from smart page breaks it helps you, you know, to sort the page breaks page break after each major grouping. So you can, you can experiment with that in particular reports. The default settings are usually pretty good. And then you could have the fit report to one pages wide. Now that's quite useful. Once again, if you have a very wide report. But remember that whenever you use these fit to kind of options down below, it could adjust the font size of the reports. And if you're giving multiple reports, it would be nice if possible to have all the fonts the same size. Otherwise it looks a little tacky, but you got to do what you got to do if you have a very wide report. And then you have fit report to one page is high, less useful because if it's two pages long, not really a problem most of the time. But if it's two pages wide and you have to tape the reports together in order to make sense of them, that's when it's a problem. So you're more likely to need this one as opposed to this one. Number of copies, one copy collate typically is going to be there by default and then print uh, in color. If you use some of the color options, obviously this one has blue in it, then that could be useful if you're able to print them in color. So be aware that it's going to basically print in black and white because it's a financial statement report. But if you want to make it look a little, a little bit nicer, then you have that capacity. You can also adjust the margins on the right hand side, which could be a little bit another tool that you could use if you have a report that's too long or too wide, for example. So I'm going to close that back out. So those are our options. The other thing we could do is save it as a PDF. You could save it as a PDF a couple different ways. We can go to print. We could save it as a PDF this way. And so now we've got the saving option as a PDF file. This is quite common. If you want to give the reports to someone else and kind of group the reports together, multiple reports together, you also might not have the printing option all the time to save as, as a PDF. So you might want to, to use a cute PDF printer or some kind of PDF printer. This here is one PDF printer that uh, I believe is free. It's called, I'm not promoting them. I'm not affiliated to them at all, but the, it, I think you can download a cute PDF printer. And that way, if you do not have an option to print to a PDF, you can still use the printing tool, which will then print to a PDF. So I'll, I'll show you how that works in a second as well. So let's do it the first way this time. I'm just going to save as a PDF. 
and then I've got to put it to a particular folder. Let's organize our folder real quick. I'm going to minimize this. I'm going to put this into our folder here. I'm going to open the folder. Now, when you organize the folders, typically you might have by client. If you're a bookkeeper or accountant, we're going to go into Castle Rock Construction. And then I'm going to put my reports in here. And I'm just going to rename it or make another folder. And I'm going to say these are going to be the month end reports. We might put the month end reports for 2024 or something like that. I'm going to make this larger, go into that. And there's our location. So I'm going to say, okay, I'm going to copy that location in case I need it back to QuickBooks. And now I can export the report or save it as a PDF. It's going to be going into, I said the desktop. We're going to go into the QuickBooks. I just set up this one month end reports. And then on the name, I could put this right under the name right here and say, this is going to be the summary balance sheet and again you might want to label this as number one because then it will organize within this folder as the first report so i'm going to say uh okay so there we have it and that's going to save into our folder i'll show this as a large icon so it saves it of course as a pdf which can be opened by a free program uh pdf the pdf reader and so on so there we have that all right, and so I'm going to keep doing that. I'm going to close that back out or maybe I'll yeah, let's close it out and then we'll go to the report center and do the second one. Same thing. This time I'm just going to I'm going to save this one the other way. I'm going to print it, but use the cute PDF printer. So this could be an option if you don't have the capacity to save it to a PDF and then print this one instead of sending it to a printer, it will then send it to the cute PDF printer. So now it, it's another way to allow us to print this thing out. I'm going to put it here, here, month end reports. And I'm going to say this is number two balance sheet. I'll say this is number two bal balance, balance sheet, sheet standard. And if I misspell anything again, I'm doing it kind of quick. So bear with me. And then we'll just do the rest the same for the rest of them. Number three. So I'll just use the cute PDF printer here. So we're going to say print. I'm going to save to the printer or this one, not the cute PDF printer, just the normal save to printer. This is going to be number three, comparative balance sheet. And you can see how easy it is to do this on a month end once you have this set up already. So then I'm going to go through these number four and I'm going to say print it, save as a PDF put my cursor right under here and I'm going to call this a come this isn't a very good name comparative same name but balance sheet QT so these are just the variants of different kinds of balance sheets that we could put together you may not want all of them you may want some of them you know we're just giving some ideas and we'll talk about the profit and loss reports later but here we're going to then say okay let's do this one vertical analysis I'm going to say, let's save that one as a PDF. I'm just going to call this one balance sheet, balance sheet, vertical analysis. I don't think I spelled it right there. Analysis, <laughs> sis, something like that. And I think I skipped the number. I didn't number this one. This should be number five then. I'm going to close that and then one more time i'll do the last one we'll say this is a comparative one i'm going to say print and save as a pdf and then we'll kind of organize these and zip them so be be aware of the zipping process because i think that's useful to cover so bear with me number six this is a balance sheet compare to prior year so I did those names fairly quickly, may not be the best named reports, but there it is. And then if I go into these reports here, I'm going to rename this one, which should be number four, right click and rename this one to number four. So then we could, of course, attach these reports to an email or we could put them in a cloud drive for someone like a Dropbox or into a OneDrive or google drive or something like that if we're if we're going to email them to someone 
then we might not be able to attach them as one attachment. We would have to have six attachments. So we might try to think, is there another way that I can email this and have like either one report to give them, one file to give them, or uh, can I zip them in some way? So those are, those are the two options. So next time we'll actually go into QuickBooks and we'll try to use Excel exporting and the cute PDF printer to zip the report or to put the reports onto one PDF file in a pretty, pretty easy way to do. And that can be kind of impressive to someone to be able to open just one file that has all the reports in it. And, or we might say, let's zip the file so that I can attach it to like a, a, uh, an email if I'm going to try to give it to someone by email. So to do that, if I go back to one report here and I just right click on this folder, I can compress it typically. So I'm going to say, I want to zip this folder compress to a zip file. And so there it is. It might, it, you might see a file with a zipper on it. it might not look exactly the same, but it's a compressed file. So now if I was to open up my email, then I wouldn't be able to attach this file to an email, but I may be able to attach this file. Therefore, instead of giving someone something that they got to download six different PDFs, you can give them something where they have one thing to download. At least that might make it a little bit easier. Although it might be a little bit more secure these days and easy to put it on like a cloud drive and note that the numbering of these files makes it a little bit nicer to tell them what order you think would be best for them to open the files in. So next time, again, we'll go over these and say, is there a way that we can get these all on one file, right? If you had a, if you had an Adobe Acrobat or something, you could do that, but we can also do it by trying to export to Excel and then using Excel to save all of those files to one PDF. So we'll practice doing that next time.